No, zero, down boy. My, what a brilliant nose you have, the better to light my way. You're the head of the team, zero. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the Diamond Select, the nightmare before Christmas. This is Zero. Zero is the pet dog of Jack Skellington, the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, a spectral canine with a glowing jack-o'-lantern for a nose. Zero is called into action to lead Jack's sleigh along with several skeletal reindeer when Jack's Christmas plans are threatened by fog. This deluxe action figure of Zero from Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas comes with a doghouse, a display stand, and a piece of town square diorama. Collect all six parts. Zero was also sculpted by Dave Cortez. First thing I'm going to do is grab my tape measure. Zero is going to be a little tricky to measure just for the fact that he doesn't really, he's not really intended to stand on his own. Instead, he's supposed to be attached to his display stand. So really the stand could be adjusted to any way that you want. I'm just going to have it to right there. And I've had the neck adjusted, actually a couple of the knuckles I've had bent, but we're going to go ahead and go from there. 6.2 inches in height is zero, even though he's technically, well, he's only that big. Switching that to centimeters, however, you're looking at 15.9, approximately 16 centimeters tall. I know, I know, that's not the greatest of ways of measuring him. Well, we're going to go with that for the time being. Let's have a look at his accessories, some of which, unfortunately, will have to look incomplete for the time being. This is the center fountain area, and we've already had a look at the component pieces for the, the fountain that goes inside of here. Unfortunately, though, I don't know where I've put the, the top of the fountain. And eventually, if I do find the other pieces, I'll do a follow-up kind of updated video where I'll show you how it looks with the fountain intact. In the meantime, it's sort of just the bottom bath area in which the water's gonna be flowing itself into. It really does look quite good, imagining if you would, that this would be complete. You see all the individual bricks here, all sculpted and kind of dry brushed here when that sort of blue over top of the dark kind of blue based gray that they use. It's a really neat looking piece. You can imagine how much more impressive would it would actually look if I had the fountain in place. Hold that thought. I'm actually going to find that. I'll see if I can do a follow up video. In the meantime, we sort of have this as our starting point, not really much to look at for the time being, but it does look pretty cool, I have to admit. Then we have all the other component pieces that come with Zero. Um, he doesn't really have many, but I guess he has the things that you would expect Zero to come included with, like for example, his doghouse. The doghouse is a small miniature, very Tim Burton-esque design. You can see zero is written or etched into the top area here, and then he's got a little doorway here. The doorway has that beautiful pop of white color, as you can see, an almost dog-like uh, cro skull and crossbones there, making the decorations there on the front of the door. Still the same color palette that they use of this blue-based gray with a dry brushing of a lighter shade of that same blue over top of it. Really does look very, very nice. I like that a lot. Along the side, you can see kind of a very crudely, very uh, kind of broken down fence way that's running around the whole area of the door, around the house area here. And then you've got the similar kind of uh, almost illustrated sort of grassing that they've got around the bottom area here. And then, of course, the house is planked on top of that. Looks very, very cool. Um, one of the other things he comes also with is his little dog dish. The dog dish has zero written across the front and inside I've already included the included uh, candy cane that came inside the packaging. The candy cane is a softer plastic. You can see that it does have a little bit of bend to it. I wouldn't ex certainly uh, accept for the fact, I wouldn't say that uh, you know you should be bending it, but I'm using this exception just to show you that it is a softer plastic. It's not certainly the type that's gonna break on you, but that being said, you really don't need to be bending it back and forth just to prove that. I can do that because 
I just want to show you guys. There is zero again written on the along the front of the dog dish, and we can put that right over there. And that's pretty much it. The rest of it is zero. Well, the rest of it is zero, and then his included display stand. The same stand as what we've seen with other Diamond Select releases. A adjustable neck that has four adjusted knuckle points or hinge joints. You can rotate it here. You can hinge it back and forth, providing you find where that hinge joint is located. There, you can ratchet it back and forth there. You can ratchet it back and forth up here and here. And lastly, up here. And then each one of these joints also can swivel back and forth. I think there might be a little too many joints. Or certainly, I think the neck might be a little too high for, say, the likes of zero. So one thing I may very well do is just take one point off and just kind of shorten it a little bit. Um, I may not even have it completely straight up. You can see how it attaches to the under area of zero. Just kind of plug that in place like that. And you can either have it just straight up or you can bend the joints back a little bit. Whoops, and not drop certainly zero in the process of it. But you can just bend them a little bit so that it just has a little bit more of a dynamic pose. Certainly at least the neck looks a little bit more dynamic than just having it straight up. And you can bring this up, just attach zero to the under area there. Just plug it right underneath his head, just like that. And you can go like that. That's probably how I'm gonna have it displayed. I certainly don't need all this adjustable neck extra piece. That I can completely leave off. Just before we kind of get a closer look at zero, I want to bring in his master. This is Pajama Jack. We just finished, just literally finished having a look at. And there's the two figures side by side, as they should be. Size-wise, they're appropriately scaled to one another. Zero should be this size as he was in the movie. So too is he also this in figure form. Now going back to one of Pajama Jack's accessories, again, I'm convinced this may be the little bedding that Zero sits inside of. I didn't get a chance to actually watch Nightmare Before Christmas this year. Usually it's an annual tradition. I unfortunately draw a blank when it comes to this being for Zero, but I think you can put Zero in it. I'm sure somebody will correct me if that's not the case. Nice little side accompanying accessory piece that came included with Pajama Jack. Okay, so we'll move Jack out of the way because we've already had a look at him. Why not? We'll also move that out of the way because it really doesn't come with Zero anyways. We'll just move all the other things in place. And let's have a look at Zero. And Zero is certainly one of those characters that there's not a whole lot included with him or there's not a whole lot to him. He's really a small character. He could have also been packaged with something else, another character, for example. It could have been like a two-pack, for example. I guess what they logically decided upon was giving us the largest of the diorama pieces to make up for the fact that there was sort of a shortage on plastic when it came to the release of Zero here. As you can see, he's got the little tiny, the smallest detailed jack-o'-lantern for his nose. A nice, excellent little touch there. He's sort of kind of wafer thin. There's very thin amounts of plastic being really used for the majority of his body. He kind of has like that waving sheet, flowing sheet look to him. Um, sculpting on his face is quite good. It looks just like it did in the movie. He's got his little red collar and he's got the little wavy ears uh, blowing back behind his head here. Posability on him, there's not really a whole lot to be said. It's really just a swivel in the head. It doesn't even serve as also a ball joint. It just only turns back and forth. And I guess really all the way around if you wanted to. Like I said, there's not a whole lot to be said for this particular figure. Because Zero, by his very nature, there's really not a lot to him. I mean, they could have also made this like a wire frame. But that, of course, would have to be making use of a different material. I believe we also did get ourselves a Zero in the deluxe cloth version, the doll versions that we had to look at in the previous videos. But for what this really is, and for the fact that Zero is sort of the accompanying piece to another character, that character being Jack Skellington, he does the job that he's supposed to do. He's the tried, loyal, trusty dog for Jack Skellington. Once again, we'll just bring in Jack here even though I don't have the pinstripe, pinstripe suit Jack here currently that I can display him with. Uh, Zero does have 
very minimal amounts of accessories to come included with them. Again, most, if not all, of the plastic is kind of being tied up here with this piece. But I think for what Zero is, I think he's a nice side accessory for existing Jack Skellington figures that you already have. Zero is a bit of a smaller figure. In fact, I would almost even categorize him more as an accessory than I would a full-blown action figure, like, say, for the likes of Jack Skellington or Sally. Many people could argue the fact that because there's a whole lot less plastic being used for Zero here, this would have been a good opportunity that he could have been packaged with a lot of other smaller characters that dwell in Halloween Town. Still, though, for the lack of plastic being used for Zero, Diamond Select being the kings of diorama pieces, after all, opted to include the bottom of the watering fountain, which is great if you're collecting those pieces. I myself have always really jumped on board getting the figures more so for the figures and never really with the intent of building the larger dioramas. Same with the Ghostbusters. It just is unfortunate because I don't have the space to start building huge dioramas, which Diamond Select are really great for doing. Ultimately, though, if you do get that little bottom port, the, the main bottom basin of the watering fountain, and you really don't plan on using it, then you're ultimately paying around $35 here in Canada, $34.99 for a figure as small as zero. Could he come with some more accessories? Sure. Could he have also come with another character? Absolutely. But I guess, again, when you buy into a lot of these figures from Diamond Select, you're also buying into the fact that Diamond Select really wanted you to build a bigger diorama. And unfortunately, I really wasn't doing that with many of the figures. Ghostbuster reviews, you know, following this channel the way that you are. Thank you for doing that, by the way. I'm not really planning on ever building the rooftop scene, nor am I ever really planning on building the fire hall. So either way, a lot of those extra side accessories aren't really catered towards me. They're catered towards people that are planning on building a bigger and huge scene in which you can have all the figures displayed on. One workaround to this is many of these Diamond Select releases. I'm not sure if Zero fell into this category, but I certainly know with the Ghostbusters, you can always pick up retail versions of them that it that exclude the dioramas. I don't know how it would work if they did that with a zero because ultimately you would get a whole lot less plastic for about the same price as other of the Nightmare Before Christmas figures. Either way, excluding for the fact that really not as much resources were made to or used to make zero here and excluding for the fact that we don't really need to talk too much more about diorama pieces. You're either collecting them to build them or you're picking up the figures and you're sort of just putting those pieces to the side. Either way, Zero is a really neat accompanying piece if you already have a Jack Skellington. He looks very screen accurate and he comes included with his doghouse, his dog bowl, and of course a little candy cane to boot. He also comes with the adjustable neck, which as you can see here in final looks, I just opted to take that last piece off because I really found it was overly too long to display the figure with, if you want to call it a figure. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking up any of these Nightmare Before Christmas figures or Zero, which is so, sort of more of an accessory than anything else, some good news, Bunkos, you can currently find these all at your local comic book store. Price point may vary depending on where you are located in the world. I usually just tell you the price point of what I pick these up for because that's where I live. In Canada, they're on average about $34.99, and that's a going rate for what you would normally get for Diamond Select releases. Either way, go. Either way, though, if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, like I said, they're currently available in comic book stores right now. Hey, now, also, if you guys haven't had a chance, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. If you're also new to this channel, let me know down below. I always like, intro I always like to be introduced by new viewers, and I like to, in turn, say hello. Welcome to the channel. So if you are new to this channel, let me know down below in the comments section. And rest assured, if Nightmare Before Christmas is your thing, there's going to be some more stuff coming your way onto this channel. We're going to have a look at some more other Diamond Select Nightmare Before Christmas releases, so stay tuned for those. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do, and I'll see you next time.